shopgear.com. The following is a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. This is the Listen In Podcast with your hosts, John Cimino and Brandon Gorell, here on the Gear Radio Network. Do not adjust the podcast feed, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we have assembled for the 2020, my babies. How's it going? My name is John Cimino at I am JC Money. Welcome to the Listen In Podcast. Join, finally, after eons of illnesses and other things between you and myself, my co-host, the esteemed Mr. Brandon Grell. Brandon, say hello. Yo. That's, that's all you get for the 2020 from him. That's a yo. <laughs> uh, we are on the air, of course, on Spreaker, Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, iHeartRadio, Spotify, wherever fine podcasts can be heard. Pandora as well. We're very popular on Pandora, so thank you, Pandora listeners. But also on the on the brand new and constantly updated Radio.com app. We are on Radio.com. It's awesome. I'm very happy about that, as you can tell. But uh, we are back, ladies and gentlemen, listening on today's show. Uh, Brandon and I, we're just going to catch up on things. We've got the, we got the microphones on, and we're just going to talk. That's it. Uh, we'll talk about the NFL, of course, because that's where this podcast is driven from, and uh, talk about the playoff predictions make our own playoff predictions and probably listen to Brandon talk about how he's the champion every week and the champion for the season ah. this year, but I'll let him go ahead and yeah. do all that. But, uh, yes, indeed. So, uh, Brandon, my man, what is good? Uh, the Green Bay Packers have a first round by pretty damn psyched about them. Yes. Yes. The, uh, uh, you know what? The, the, the New York Jets have a six month by <laughs> they're going on that, uh, that, uh, What's it called? That uh, extended uh, extended golf trip. That's right, extended golf trip. That's right, or at least for Adam Gay it, with Adam Gates, it's an extended fort, uh, fortnight trip. <laughs> I have him and Sam Darnold. Even though Sam, even though Sam Darnold, the nicest guy in the world, doesn't like him, <laughs> right? <laughs> Report, reportedly. But uh, how was New Year's, man? Uh, you know, it was good. It was good. It's quiet, which is nice. I'm always mm-hmm. a big fan of quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, I went to the cousins like I, you do traditionally every year, hung out there for a few hours early, uh, and figured, okay, I got a, I got a lady friend this year, so, uh, I'm going to go see Ooh. her. And, uh, so I spent the night there and, uh, hung out and stuff. So it was nice. Um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty chill. Uh, no hangover this year, which is you know, as I get older, no hangovers are the way to go. Um, right, right. So it, it, it was looking like, you know, if I would have stayed at this party, it would have definitely been a hangover. Um, <laughs> oh, so you were, get, you were getting to the point? Uh, no, I wasn't getting to the point, but the room, I was reading the room, mm-hmm. and, and the room was saying, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty crazy in here. All right. Very good. So, yeah, it was it was good. What about you? That's cool. Well, for me, man, it was a silent one, so to speak. Uh, kids silent were with but deadly? Their, you said, well, no, no, they're those, those were loud and flavorful. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we were, you know, the the, the kids were with uh, their mother this year, so I I spent the day uh, really on the road driving uh, for Uber and Lyft, um, and I got mm-hmm. to meet a lot of people, a lot of interesting people, some interesting folks. Yes, but the the interesting ones were the now the roads they were they were fine. There was nobody. There was significantly less traffic out there than I had grown used to in years past, and I'm assuming that Uber and Lyft have a lot to do with that. Um, but the pre gamers were the ones that were obviously the most festive. Um, and taking the the spruce moose, which for those of you that are listening here to me ramble about non football related stuff. The Spruce Moose is my 2013 Honda Odyssey. Um, <laughs> I had I had the XL going on that, and it was back to back, and yeah. it, it was it was seriously it was like a, it was like it was like I was driving a bus. Did you get large was, parties? Oh yeah, I filled three in the back uh, back row, three in the middle row, and one up front with me. At okay. least about four or five times. 
That's and took bad. and would take them from one destination, you know, from where wherever they were meeting up to to like Nosh or to you know someplace on Monroe or from mm-hmm. Monroe to Greece, and you know, so right. got some distances there, and that was and that was pretty cool. But uh, I mailed it in probably about eleven o'clock from driving because I didn't want to be taking drunk people home. Um, no, yeah, you know, it's, it's one thing a... to, to pick up pre gamers to take, you, you know, that they you could tell they've had a few, but they're not at that point of inebriation where they're so belligerently like they're belligerent and gone and they could be thrown up in your car or anything like that. Like I didn't want that. So I quit at about 11 o'clock, grabbed a six of high life, only drank <laughs> half of one. And the ball dropped, and so did I. Not like about five minutes later. <laughs> so that's 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 what happens with New Year's. Well, I guess when you get older, you know. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, it especially when you got to work, you know. Like it's just kind of like I don't know, man. You get done working, and you just all you want to do is just go sit on your ass and yeah. And and like, that, uh, is, that is literally all I did. I yeah. sat there, and my tradition uh, every year has been to put on uh, a, 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 I've watched Dick Clark's R- New Year's Rock and Eve for as long as I can remember. Um, even when Dick Clark was, was, you know, very brave in his final days going out there and doing his thing. Um, but I still watch it because it's tradition and traditionally I would get that. And then, you know, they would, they would drag Jenny McCarthy's drunk ass out there <laughs> and, you know, I would tweet about it. You know, angrily. Where's whatever, my because... boyfriend? I'm gonna kiss him. Wow. <laughs> exactly. It was a fireman one year. It's Marky Mark's brother this year. Whatever. I don't know. Huh. Um, but uh, you know, they didn't have Jenna McCarthy this year. So I was. So my tradition uh, was thrown off. I was very much looking forward to my annual a- anti Jenny McCarthy tweet, and I did not get that. And the show was much better this year uh, with without Jenny McCarthy. Yeah, uh, and and the performance from Post Malone that was on that that, that happened there it's a pretty damn good performance. Um, yeah, I didn't know much about po- my girlfriend is a obsessive Post fan. I've, She's I've big on the I've Post. Heard, I well, I I had heard of him, mm-hmm. and I know I heard one of his songs, um, but I didn't register who it was or you know or really give it a listen. Like I I, I just. I'd heard of him and I know I'd heard the song on radio or whatever, but seeing him perform and everything, I, I thought it was, I thought it was great. So um, that was pretty cool. But yeah, that was, that was pretty much it for me with, uh, with new year's, nothing, nothing huge to write home about there. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you what though, uh, the ad, moving to what we normally talk about here on this here podcast, Brandon, the regular season is over. And Rather than sit through and go kind of, you know, you know, week by week, you know, what what was by with this team and then this team did this and I was surprised by this or whatever, it just kind of condensed it to four different four different topics. Um so as far as the season overall, uh what what surprised you the most out of this two thousand and seven or seventeen, wow, two thousand and nineteen, two thousand twenty NFL season? Uh, I have to say just how competitive it was. Um, there's a lot of good teams in the NFC. The AFC is kind of a mess outside of Baltimore. Um, you're starting, well, Kansas City's pretty good too, but after that, it's just a bunch of, you know, teams, but all those teams look like they, they could do something like, you know, you could see a Buffalo beating Houston and then having to face, Kansas City on the road or Baltimore on the road. Yeah, probably Baltimore on the road. Um, yeah, they, they play. England's they play. Going to win their their uh, game against. I mean, if Tennessee beats New England and upsets New England, and and Buffalo gets the upset, then Buffalo is going to go to Kansas City and right. and Tennessee will go to um, Baltimore. But right. I mean, Buffalo gave you know Baltimore fits, uh, and if Bal- Buffalo's defense can do what they did and then you know get some more contribution on offense i mean you could see that team in an afc championship game or they can lose to houston I, mm-hmm. it's just so right. tight you know it's, in the it's AFC. funny it's funny you say that too because uh, when i record a trust the podcast with ryan this week um both of us picked the, the bills to win this game i think we both were on the same page as far as 
picking the Bills primarily because of of, of of the homer status of that podcast, but also because we we could see because the Bills very much this year uh, are a, a punch you in the mouth kind of team. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, it just there there hasn't been very many times where they've been hit harder. Um, right. and go down, but they, they, they leave themselves open to be hit harder. Um, which is why it, this is such a unique game with, with, with Houston because, you know, Deshaun Watson, he's great. Uh, his yeah. connection with Will Fuller, uh, that's something special there. Will Fuller, DeAndre Hopkins. Like, Will Fuller is hurt. Uh, they said he was coming back. They yeah, said we'll he was coming back that. this game. I, he came I, back for the uh, Tampa game too, and then he got hurt on the second series of the game. The guy can't stay on the field. Um, but they all. But now on the def- on the defensive side, JJ Watts coming back. Um, yeah. You know, I don't know how effective he's going to be because a torn pec is, you know, really hard to come back from. <laughs> right. You know, but he's right. superhuman. It seems so. But it seems um, like every year Houston gets to the playoffs and they just take a dump on the field. Right. Just, <laughs> well, that that was. That was another point that I made is that I, I, I feel like it's it's been, you know, a while and maybe it has something to do with Bill O'Brien, not necessarily the players on the team, but Bill O'Brien himself. I mean, he did win he a, a playoff of, game. Unluck in the injury department. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, there he was got, a couple of years where they had to go with like, you know, backup quarterbacks to start the game. So, right, right. And he's know, won a couple we'll of playoff games. I mean, with lesser quarterbacks than Deshaun Watson, Brock Osweiler comes to mind. Uh, he won a playoff game with, with Osweiler, and then, of course, they lost to New England. Right. Um, and he had, I think, Tom Savage one year as uh, as as his starting quarterback in a playoff, and I think they won a game I, with him, too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I, could, I could be wrong. Um, According to O'Brien, by the way, uh, on your earlier point, Fuller is a game-time decision. Oh, it's game time to sit. Okay, so yeah, he's hey, a game time well, decision. I had heard it on. I heard it on um, ESPN Radio from you know whatever source. So I because they're going to need it, a second. They're going to see a second option because Hopkins is going to be locked up with Tre'Davious White. So mm-hmm. uh, you know that's going to be a tough one. Um, yeah, it's it's going to be one. And, and need I all equated, their cannons firing. I I equated this Bills team. This I said this Bills team kind of reminds me a lot of. Not not in terms of the the luster and the lure of an eighty five Bears or two thousand Baltimore Ravens, but they kind of have that sort of feel to it where they've ha- relied heavily on their defense, yeah, to keep to either win or keep them in games, um, right. you know. And then of course the fourth quarter rolls around, and then Josh Allen, you know, does his Josh Allen thing, and mo- momentum swings big, but. You know, for three out of those four quarters, it's it's all on the defense. Right. So Buffalo's getting to a stretch where they they can't they they've really got to kind of get it together on both, not just on one side. So yeah. that's that's why you know again to your point, I could see them, I could see them hosting the AFC Championship game against against Tennessee. You know, yeah. um, that's how it, I, up in the air it is. I mean, right. Yeah, it, 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 crazy. So it's 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 it is it is crazy there, and I and I will agree that um I, well I would say that my biggest surprise uh, of of the season would be Buffalo and how well they they continuously done. Um, but the the best it's story a of the season team though that's the the nice thing about them is right is exactly they've still got like next year they're going to have like eighty five mil in cap mm-hmm. space. Yeah. So you know and. You know they 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 got to get a little a little better at the wide receiver position. Um, Brown's real good, um, you know, but you've got a bunch of slot guys, and that mm-hmm. that's tough. You need someone, especially with an arm like Allen, you need somebody that can open the field and and, and a burner out there, and they just don't right. have that right now. Um, right. So we'll see, but you know it'll well, be it, interesting to watch. It's well, the, afternoon. I I feel that the. Or you know, at least the the sports media experts, which could be a, a blessing or a curse, um, they're all kind of looking at Buffalo, saying it may not be this season, but next season Buffalo could take that division. Yeah, um, I mean, you know, they, so they it, could have this year. Um, oh yeah, New England's New England's uh, unless they pick up a stud quarterback, their uh, uh, you know their days might be numbered. Yeah, I'm 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 thinking. One way, shape, or form, I, I'm thinking this is it for Brady. Whether he retires, like I think he's going to retire, uh, or 
they let him go and he tries to find uh, a different team. But you know, an interesting, an interesting uh, storyline uh, to keep an eye on is the Philip Rivers to the Colts uh, connection that we're starting to hear now that are starting to come out is that uh, Indian Indianapolis would be pushing hard for Philip Rivers to come there. I mean, that's not a bad gift for Phil- for Indianapolis. I mean, not at uh, all. You, the thing that sucks is, is that you just gave that money to Jacoby Brissett too. And you're going to say, Hey son, just sit for a couple seasons. Like we gave you a nice contract to be the starter here after Andrew Luck bounced, but um, even though he played well, um, they're still going to be like, "Hey, maybe you should bounce." Right, right. <laughs> maybe you right. should sit on the. Maybe you should sit the rest of the season out. Like, Indeed. All I right. mean, they went seven and nine, but they were really injury bit. Yes, and I mean it was it was uh, for them to go seven and nine after this, you know, sudden retirement of their. You know, when Jacoby Brissett played well, but and, but Andrew Luck was their franchise quarterback. Right. Like he's he was on a different level, and they, he retired after the third preseason game. So for them to go seven and nine, even despite that, that's not yeah. it's not a bad seven and nine. And there was a time know? they were, you know, they were still in the division. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, absolutely. They just you know they kind of fell apart. That's all. So what that is happens. your what is your best story of the season? Everything for everything that's happened here. What do you? Uh, what are you going to think of if you look back on this season and say, you know, I think it was probably the best, you know, storyline or the best moment or the best part of that season? Hmm. I mean, biasly, I can say Green Bay having a rookie head coach and going 13 and three is pretty a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, no, I don't myself included did not think that we would finish the you know, the season 13 and three no. and basically come within literally three inches of being the number one seed in the NFC, um, I, you, guys that, should, you guys should have been fourteen. You guys should have been fourteen and two. Yeah, yeah, we should I, have been I fourteen. Two, that, probably that fifteen Eagles, and that, one. That, that Eagles, Eagles game, game should but, not. I mean, we shouldn't have gone out to LA and taken a dump on the field against the Chargers either. But you know that yeah. that shit happens. I mean, the 49ers yeah. game again. That was one of those ones we just didn't show up. Um, they were out of it from like the first snap, basically. And uh, we can't have any of those this postseason, but right. I don't know. The team just finds ways to win every game. And you kind of have to like a team like that because you don't know what to prepare for. It right. used to be like, let's shut down Aaron Rodgers. Well, now they also have to fo- shut down Aaron Jones and they have to worry about Devontae Adams. But then again, they also have to worry about that defense. I mean, that mm-hmm. defense gave up 313 points this year. Chicago and all the money they spent on that side of the ball gave up 298 um, and went eight and eight. You know, Minnesota spends a lot of money on defense and they've always been known for defense and they gave up 303 in the division. So right. Green Bay really appro- improved in that area. And uh, it, it just the whole team all around. It's it's a it's an interesting team because they they don't have anything that they play amazing in. Mm-hmm. Uh, their run game is probably the closest thing they have to it. Um, but overall, like they just are really good at everything else though. Like, you know, you don't know. I mean, you, it's like, Oh, Aaron Rodgers, he had a, he had a really bad season this year. And I'm like 4,002 yards, 26 touchdowns and four picks. Yeah. That's, uh, I not mean, a, that's not, that's a, not a terrible season. season by any means. Well, you know um, what? Just, we're so used to Rodgers putting up, but, Rodgers also used to have to carry the team. Right. You know? he, he, he always often he was now. often the leading rusher for his own teams. Right. And he um, now now this year he, it's way more wide open like you said with Aaron Jones right. and then of course the Packers actually having a defense this year. Um you know that's that's worth talking about. Uh, there's they they finally did Aaron Rodgers right this season at, at, at the very least. You know regardless of the outcome, you know whether or not they actually win the Super Bowl. Like mm-hmm. they did, they did him a solid this year. Yeah, um, I think the other story is is that how resilient the Philadelphia Eagles have been. Um, those guys have not had their starting wideouts for about seven weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, their line is banged up. Their defensive secondary is banged up. They're using a lot of guys that are off the practice squad. They had they had a, one of their receivers was playing for uh, the San Antonio Commanders. In the uh, in the uh, now in the defunct alliance alliance football uh, oh, league, man, yeah, the memory, and, the memories of my fleet. <laughs> so you know they're using guys from 
you know, that league to just fill holes. And yet they rallied, they beat Dallas and then they win their last game to go nine and seven and host a home game. Um, given all that they've kind of gone through where other teams have like, you know, they've had injuries and they've crumbled. There's other teams that have been healthy and crumbled. Um, I'm looking at you, Cleveland. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and again, I mean, Pittsburgh Steelers, the, the, the coaching job that Mike Tomlin did using some fucking clown four string quarterback, you know, and, and, and all the shit that went on in that team and all the injuries mm-hmm. that that team had and all the people that left that team. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he got them to eight and eight and they were in for a playoff spot the last game of the season. So, right. You know, I, there's a lot of good stories and a lot of like, but it just, again, speaks to how, I mean, yeah, there's the bottom feeders like Cincinnati, the Giants, you know, the Redskins, the Jets. but even the Dolphins, you know, played well down the stretch. And like, right. after they looked like the most miserable team probably ever was going to play football, right. you know, to start the season and they win that game against the Jets. And then it was like, oh, it's not a fluke. We're going to go beat the Colts too. And, you know, they hung with the Bills for a while and, mm-hmm. you know, they got blown out by the Browns, but they beat the Eagles. You know, then they got, then they got they, that loss to the Jets by a point. And then they got the Patriots at the end. And yeah, and they got well, they got the Bengals and the Patriots and they finished out the season five and 11 after mm-hmm. what looked like historically bad. I mean, they were 59, 10 losers, 43, nothing losers, 31, mm-hmm. six and 30, 10 to start the season. I mean, yeah. And that's where a lot of the a lot of the uh, pundits and, you know, people like you and I were like, what the hell? Like, I we've heard of tanking, but this is. This is absurd, yeah. putting people out there to get blown out like that. Like, it, it looked like obvious tanking until it wasn't. Um, right. And so that, that you know, who knows what the, what the deal with that is. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that uh, my, my best story of the season, I, I feel, has been mm-hmm. the comeback story of Ryan Tannehill. Like, it's, yeah. it, has been, it has been something to see him um do his do his thing there with Tennessee after taking over for Mariota how he's been playing how he you know and maybe it's selfishly ties to Adam Gase and my disdain for him uh being the New York <laughs> Jets head coach and all that stuff but there's there's the similarity there is that he was you know Tannehill's coach XYZ amount of, uh, XYZ amount of years and you know, the supposed quarterback whisper, Tannehill was excommunicated from Miami after being their franchise quarterback. I mean, right. Joe Philbin, you know, for, for Joe Philbin, the guy that drafted Tannehill in Miami, you know, he wasn't doing a bad job with him. You know, Tannehill wasn't regressing. He was, he was yeah. progressing. And then he kind of just was stagnant under Gase. And then he goes over to Vrabel at, and, and, and Tennessee gets his spot and now i mean i don't think he's leaving that team at all i think that no and they're gonna work to keep him and they should sucks is that Mariota wasn't even playing terrible right you know like he he'd thrown 1203 yards seven touchdowns and two picks they just weren't winning so they went for another you know another another quarterback and it just clicked with you know it clicked with them i mean it just i mean played seven games this year and you know they just the offense just wasn't, you know, doing much. It was he was getting sacked a lot, and uh, you know, it, it just it it, it was kind of unfortunate. I don't think Mariota played bad. I don't think he's a bad quarterback. It just, I guess, Vrabel felt something different and felt it was time for a change. And I mean, Tannehill, you know, played the last nine games and threw for twenty seven hundred yards, twenty two touchdowns, and six picks. So right. I, I, I think maybe maybe it's the, just the system that Vrabel has. Maybe it just yeah. works better for Tannehill than it did for maybe. Mariota. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and that could be all all there is to it there with that. Um, so that that to me that was my best story of the season. Uh, what was your worst? What do you think was the worst story of the season? I, I'm pretty it's sure Cleveland, it's, Cleveland's it's, uh, Cleveland and Dallas were probably the two most disappointing teams in the NFL. Um, yes. two rosters loaded with stars, loaded with big names, a lot of focus and a lot of tension on both rosters. One is always like playoffs or bust every year. And then there's another one that was like, Hey, this could be our time finally to kind of, you know, turn the tide of this whole, you know, Cleveland Brown stigma. And they, they fell right back into it. Freddie kitchens was an embarrassment as a head coach. Right. And he is um, gone. It he culminated. Gone yeah. He's gone. Everybody knows that, but he 
it culminated with the the you know the the Thursday night game where you know Miles Garrett and goes swinging you know the helmet. That was the end of the game. I mean, you got to tell your guys to be disciplined, play prevent defense, get your tackle and get out of there. This mm-hmm. guy's sending blitzers, but at the same time, Pittsburgh's throwing the fucking ball in their own end down two scores with seven seconds left. Uh, you know, they, they, they were both just looking for something stupid to happen. And if Kitchens had any fucking discipline on his side of the ball, then, you know, maybe that shit doesn't happen, but he doesn't have it. His players didn't have it. His players were, you know, they need somebody to go in there and they need somebody to kind of clean house with that team and just like, listen, you had fun last year. Animal House is over. It's fucking big boy time. It's time to go win some fucking football games and, and not play any games with anybody. And, you know, they, they're apparently interviewing McCarthy um, and they have interest in Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer will not take any of that shit. Right. Um, you know, he's already got serious Ohio credentials already, you know, with mm-hmm. what he did at Ohio State. Um, and I don't think they're that concerned in the NFL with what happened with his whole uh, looking the other way shit down in uh, Ohio State. Um, well, you know, I, in, you, speaking of, of the Cowboys, I, I know you're on Ohio right now, but yeah. I, I just happened to see uh, I'm cruising through Twitter a, as I'm listening to you. And Ed Werder just put out there uh, probably about a, well, almost an hour ago now. It says source. Cowboys Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones have moved slowly and quote with abundance of care and respect end quote for Jason Garrett. That phase expected to conclude soon with Garrett not part of the organization. Next phase to involve candidate interviews will begin quickly thereafter. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't understand. I, I don't know why they're slowly doing this. Like they're bleeding I, I, him out. This is this is the same group of individuals that fired Tom Landry like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Bill like, Parcells like, and, too. And Parcells no too. Yeah. But Jason Gary, I don't, I, see ya. I don't understand this. This is really weird. Yeah. I don't know. Cause he's uh, probably a good guy and he's been there a while. It and, could and be. He has got him in the playoffs, but they just haven't had a lot of success. No, definitely um, not. The Cowboys definitely stopped playing, playing for him. That was, you know, a, a, a time or two. I mean, noticeable, most noticeable, I think it was on a Sunday night game. I think it was a Sunday night game. Uh, one of the Sunday games they were on where he was trying to, you know, motivate his team, clapping for them and trying to, you know, <laughs> slap them up on the, as they were, as they were headed towards the sidelines and. Oh, the clap. And they, they walk. Yeah, exactly. He's going to be exactly. clapping somewhere else. He'll get yes, snatched indeed. up somewhere else. Um, New York Giants are already, you, you know, they, they've got that, you know, hot rumor out there. Yeah. Is that the, the Giants, cause, uh, what's his name? Um, holy crap. Who? Shermer, Shermer, right? Pat Shermer, that's it. Um, I almost said Schumer, <laughs> but uh, uh, Pat <laughs> Shermer uh, removed from there. So there's going to be an opening there. Washington already filled its vacancy with Ron Rivera, so right. you can you can wipe that and out. Jack so, Del Rio, that's a big. That's like a big. Uh, wait, Del Rio's there too. Del Rio's the other defensive coordinator. Wow, I that I didn't hear. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's, yeah. that's Jack Del that's, Rio that's, is already their uh, defensive coordinator. Okay, that's those. That's those. That's a very good move on their part. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, he's a good defensive coordinator, not a great head coach. No, not at all. But he's a no nonsense guy, right? Um, I think that'll go really well. Yes, absolutely. Um, I, for, for me, and Jerry Jones didn't meet Thursday. So many conflicting reports there. Four days <laughs> after the season ended, he remains the head coach. Garrett had at least two meetings. But did not meet Thursday, Calvin Watkins of the Dallas Morning News reports. All right, I, I was going to say the worst story of the season for me has been was the Antonio Brown thing. Um, yeah, I mean that wasn't great, but you know what? At the same time, who gives a shit? Yeah, well, <laughs> it's one player, I, you know. Like I like team I just stuff. didn't. I just didn't like how it was. How it was drug? It, 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 it was drug. It's they kind of. I feel like out. I, I mean, feel like they drug him through the. They drug him through the. You know the the ringer. And, and then, but then he's not, he's not done himself any favors. No, he hasn't. He's, you know what I mean? So he's kind of being, you know, Mr. Big Chest at every fucking chance he could. And then, uh, you know, that's usually when you like say, Hey, I have a target on my back. That's usually when somebody shoots at it. 
Right, exactly. So, uh, but no, I would say that I would say uh, that the worst story of the season are arguably, yeah, Cleveland and um, Sam Darnold having mono. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> although the gra- although the graph although the graphic that ESPN created uh, was probably the best story of the season for the, for the New York Jets, you know, the mononucleosis one where Darnold points yeah. and smiles. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, it. I don't know. I, I think that. With a good coach, they're going to be okay in New York, but mm-hmm. they've still got. You know, they've you got know. Captain Googly Eyes. Yeah. They're not going to. They're not going to let him go. And, and it makes it, it does in a way make sense as to why they're not going to let him go because they're still paying Todd Bowles. Yeah. Um. Next year, if they, hypothetically speaking, they were to let go of Adam Gase, they would be paying Todd Bowles in the final years of uh, final year of his contract, Adam Gase, and then whomever that third head coach would be. So they'd be paying for three head coaches. Um, so from that aspect, I get it, but in the, other, in another aspect, stop picking freaking bonehead head coaches, you know, yeah. not bowls. Bowls wasn't boneheaded. <laughs> I just think he was in over his head. Yeah. Um, I think he's, a you know, much like Rex Ryan, he was a better defensive coordinator than a head coach. Um, but you know, bowls was a nice guy and yeah. the New York media, the New York media didn't hate him. You know, they liked him, even though he didn't win very many games in years two, three, and four they still liked him and respected him as a man and humanitarian. They're not saying that about Adam, Adam Gase at all. Manish Menta is freaking creating burner accounts to, <laughs> to, to troll Adam Gase. So um, that's how well, that's how much he's liked out there, but whatever. I don't, it is what it is, but all right. Um, head coaches that should be removed from their positions. It's I mean, the, a bunch of it's already happening. Adam Gase. There we go. That's who I think there. And uh, Jason Garrett. <laughs> Jason That's Garrett. Right now, but, I mean, he's uh, already, so. I mean, he's, he's no longer a coach in 12 days either way. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, well, we'll see, but um, that's going to, I oh, was go going to point out this little nugget too. When I was go talking ahead. about the Jack Del Rio uh, hire, they're going to shift to the four, three defense. And apparently Chad Johnson wants to come back to the NFL and he's telling Ron Rivera to call him. <laughs> He's and apparently in- Haskins is on board. <laughs> <laughs> Chad Johnson's he looks in great wanting- shape, man. I- he's been wanting to come him. back to the NFL for a while. Yeah. Um, and I mean, most recently, I think I saw something about three weeks ago or whatever that he was he he was saying uh, he wants to come back as a kicker. Yeah, <laughs> he uh, he looks like he's in good shape. Well, yeah, maybe you know, I I would I Still wouldn't mind seeing I wouldn't mind seeing Ocho Cinco out there again. Yeah, why not? I don't know. But uh, I'll tell you what, what we're going to do is uh, right now we're going to flip it over to a quick commercial break. We're going to go ahead. We're going to give some love to uh, love to uh, our sponsors right here. And we will see you on the other side of those in podcast. Stick around. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, listening to podcast here on the Gear Radio Network or Pandora or Radio.com. Those are my two preferred podcast apps to listen to. Hopefully you're listening to us on any podcast app because we're on we're all over the place. John Samino here, Brandon Gorell there. And hey. uh, now as we uh, head back here, it's him again. You got it, yeah, it was a better introduction for him this coming yo. in from the commercial than it was uh, <laughs> it was just yo. I took my notes. Take your notes very yeah, yeah, constructive criticism. <laughs> very good. Um, all right, so wild card weekend, my man. Yes, and as per norm, uh, we, we've done this in seasons past, we're going to do this in seasons present and seasons future. Um, we're going to go through the, the slate of games and uh, and kind of you know, maybe chit chat about whatever and 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 make our picks, and then we'll we'll see next week how we did so uh in the afc uh the teams that made it in the ravens chiefs they have the bye uh patriots texans bills and titans are on the wild cards and then for the nfc we have the 49ers packers saints eagles seahawks and vikings um the buys the buy teams are baltimore and case and kansas city thanks to a Win in Miami, uh, or win by Miami over the Patriots, knocked them out of there. Brought Casey right up there. Uh, San Francisco, Green Bay, uh, as you alluded to earlier on, Green Bay, some 
what three yards away from being the number one seed? Is that is that and not even three that? yards, three inches, man? That okay? So that I thing almost as- made it to the goal line. I, I fell asleep during that game. So take me through that. What happened? Yeah. So uh, the uh, Seahawks were driving down as time was going down, and they got the ball down to the one. And there was some hesitation getting the package in. There was an injured lineman as well um, that had to run to get to the ball and spike it because they had no timeouts left. And they got the ball out at the one-yard line, and they were going to bring in Marshawn Lynch, but they ended up getting a delay a game. They didn't do it fast enough. So then they had to move away from that and then go from the six. And they tried a couple passes in the end zone. One pass, uh, there was clear horrible pass interference in the end zone and no no call from upstairs no no flag on the field the nfl is a joke on these things because i mean the guy grabbed the the tight end shoulder pads turned Mm -hmm. them and spun him around and had his back to the play the whole time didn't even look for the ball and the ball goes this and by him and he didn't get a chance to catch it Um, i don't even understand what the point of that stupid challenge i don't either they didn't get the challenge because it was inside two minutes but it should have been Uh, called down from above saying, Hey, there, there's some pass interference possibility. Let's look at that. Nothing. Yeah. So they had one more shot at it and Wilson scrambled right and threw it to uh, their tight end who caught it at the goal line and was hit by two guys as he was trying to stretch it towards the goal line. And he literally missed it by three inches. It oh. was three inches from the goal line. Oh, man. And that was how close it was to green Bay having the number one seat. <laughs> Home f- home field at Lambeau for the playoffs would have been very it would have been great difficult for any um, team. And the 49ers would have had to go on the road. Mm-hmm. Uh, Seattle would have been the three seed. New Orleans the two seed. Um, so it, it, it changed a lot for sure. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so all right, well then that brings us to this week here. Uh, Seattle with the, I, they were they were locked into the wild card anyways. Um, but. Uh, they play on Sunday, but we're going to start with Saturday. The big game here, at least uh, in our home, in our neck of the woods, Brandon. Saturday at four uh, on ABC and ESPN tele- uh, simulcast. Yep. Buffalo at Houston. Uh, we talked about a li- we talked about it a little bit uh, earlier today. Um, so just kind of quick condense it. Who you got? Uh, you know. It's a this is one of the toughest ones for the weekend, and I think I'm gonna go with Buffalo. My heart says Buffalo. I'm really oh breaking news. Uh oh, Cowboys to move on without Jason Garrett. Oh, there the organization it is. is moving forward. All right. Well, you heard it here. I would say you heard it here first, but this is getting put out. <laughs> yeah. So according to multiple sources, the Joneses and Garrett did not have their scheduled meeting. At the Star on Thursday after meeting Monday and Tuesday without any resolution on the coach's status, Garrett's contract is set to expire on January 14th, and his status with the team has been an issue since last February when the Cowboys opted not to offer him an extension. All right. Once the parting becomes officials, uh, official, I've been mm-hmm. complaining about officials all night, uh, the Cowboys will begin their first full-blown coaching search since Bill Parzell's retirement following the 2006 season before hiring Wade Phillips ahead of the 2007 season. Cowboys cast a wide net in their interview process, including Garrett, Norv Turner, Mike Singletary, Jim Caldwell, Ron Rivera, Tal Bowles, Ta Haley, and Tony Sperano. Back in those days, I remember that. Tony oh, Sperano. Tony Spar- the late, the late <laughs> Tony Sperano. Yeah. Um, so it looks like, and this was on ESPN, and I just got the alert on my phone, too. I just that, got the alert on my phone as yeah, well. Yeah, that he's, he is gonzo. So there you have it. He is Gonzo. He is Gonzo right in this very podcast too. That's that's <laughs> crazy. And, 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 you know what? I'm not erasing the previous segment. I don't care. Um, no. But anyways, uh, I have I'm picking Buffalo as well. Although uh, Houston, um, Houston winning would not surprise me. And then the later no. game on CBS, Tennessee at New England. Brandon, uh, this one I think is a tough one as well. Yeah, um, who Tennessee. you got? Tennessee has been playing well, um, and Tannehill's a nice story, and it looks like the Patriots are on the ropes, and everyone's you know getting their their champagne ready to watch this New England Patriots just finally go away. And you know they they lost the first round bye last week, losing to the lousy Dolphins, 
uh, which is not a surprise because they always struggle with Miami in that second Lewis. game of the season. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lewis. I just sent Lewis a screenshot of the um, ESPN thing, and he is littering my littering <laughs> my inbox right now with celebration memes. <laughs> Carlton dancing, Snoop Dogg dancing. Oh, uh, he's already the- beat it once. <laughs> <laughs> he's already got one in. He's oh, he's he's happy as hell. Yeah, I, sh- I should have him call in and share his views, but uh, I'm not going to. Sorry, Lewis. <laughs> but uh, so uh, for me, Tennessee. Yeah, this is the, again. This is another very similar Buffalo to the Buffalo Houston. Um, I could see Tennessee winning. Yeah, because the Patriots haven't been playing well. It's not that not for not for Brady's age because statistically he did all right. This, yeah. this year, he, he didn't. He he wasn't. He doesn't you know, have talented. the team around him, man. Like, right. I think one of their biggest decisions or biggest mistakes, but it turned out it was going to be a problem, anyways. But getting rid of, um, Josh Gordon, yes, was was a was a big thing because all he has is Edelman now. Um, yes, yes. hundred receptions tra- for Edelman. That, that's tra- that's almost a traded- quarter. Of the yeah, receptions. Because they had Demarius Thomas and they traded him to the Jets of all teams. Yeah. Um, when they got Antonio Brown. He wasn't doing shit there anyways. But but what I'm saying is he probably could have done a little more had they not gotten rid of him. Um, they got yeah. rid of Antonio Brown a week later, but they still had Josh Gordon. Then they g- got rid of Josh Gordon and, and all hell kind of everything kind of I don't want to say fell apart because it makes it seem like right. you know they they weren't winning. They still were winning, but they were they they were human, you know. They weren't right. the Patriots, you know. They were they were just they were just another team that that could be beaten on I mean, any given Sunday, and and I, I you can tell Brady was frustrated. Yeah, he's there frustrated little, with the offense, but I mean, if you look at his stats, they're not much different from last year. Like no, last year just, he threw for forty three hundred yards, twenty nine touchdowns, eleven picks. This year he threw for four thousand fifty seven for twenty four touchdowns and eight picks. Right. So he threw five less touchdowns, but also three less interceptions. Right. He completed right. almost the same amount of passes. He attempted more because their run game can't get going. Right. Um. But honestly, like his numbers weren't that far off from most seasons. Um. You know, 2013, he was 25 and 11. Right. Right. So I I think I, I, I think with this I don't know with this game I, I think th- everyone's. Again, Picking their demise, and I still I, I think this is a, they're just gonna do the fucking Every, patriot thing. Everybody's picking their demise. Yeah. I'm gonna not so fast. I'm gonna go classic and say not yeah. so fast. I I think New England wins this game. Yeah, I think so. on. I I I don't feel confident enough in that New England team th- that I see them getting to the AFC championship game. I no. don't think th- I don't think they're going to the AFC Championship game this year. A lot which would have end, to which break would their way. which would end a, 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 a arguably a more impressive streak uh, than you know going to you know three consecutive Super Bowls that they that they went to. They've been to I think nine nine or ten consecutive AFC Championship games. Yeah, I, I can't remember the exact number. I, I maybe this year might be ten. Um, but every championship game, it, it, at least as far back as I can remember in the 2010s, yeah, like every year they're there, they were yeah. in the AFC championship game. So, so I think they're good enough to beat Tennessee. I think Tennessee might be coming in expecting to ride that momentum train and the feel good story of Tannehill. And then, you know, they're going to hit a brick wall <laughs> in, in, right. in New England, but I don't think New England, uh, blows them out or anything like that. So, uh, moving on to the Sunday games, those are all the NFC games. You got Minnesota at New Orleans. Uh, two indoor teams playing yeah. at New Orleans. Uh, I got, you got New Orleans big in that one. You got New I, Orleans uh, big. Yeah, I just with the amount of pressure that they can probably get on to, on uh on Cousins, that guy folds like a cheap suit. Man, like he's just terrible. Like. I watched him that Green Bay game. He was mm-hmm. awful. He was pure awful. Again. Yeah, I, if you can, if you can, I, I that was for the division, find, and he I did see, jack I seem shit. to find. I seem to. I seem to find with Kirk Cousins that you know, if you are, if you as an opposing team 
mm-hmm. deliberately call him out and get in his head, yeah. he 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 fizzles. It's not even he, that. Like you just got to get pressure on him. You could call him all kinds of names or say nothing about the guy all week, but if you get any pressure in his face, he wilts. Because he doesn't know how to make a decision, it seems like. It seems like he's a one-read quarterback. And if his read is there and he's got time to put it where he wants to put it, he's awesome at it. Um, but as soon as you get some pressure on him um, or his his number one guy is shut down and he just can't go to him like 10 times, 13 times a game, mm-hmm. um, that becomes a problem for him. I mean, that Green Bay game, he had Thielen back. Um you know, he didn't have the running game that he normally has. Um, they still ran pretty decently against Green Bay. But Jairi Alexander, outside of the one touchdown that Diggs caught, and Diggs was talking trash afterwards, mm-hmm. and uh, Alexander kind of looked over me and said, that was the last one you're going to get. He was right because mm-hmm. he didn't catch another ball the rest of the night. Uh, Alexander was all over him all night, and Zadaria Smith was all over Cousins. He couldn't go anywhere. And that seems to be the recipe to getting Kirk Cousins. And that line is not very good in Minnesota right now. So with Cam Jordan and and, and the defense that New Orleans has, it's a serviceable defense. And you got Lattimore that's going to cover on digs. You know, I, I just see it being a long afternoon for the Vikings on Sunday. I I think that the Vikings... Even with Elvin Cook back. Yeah, I, I Dalvin Cook is going to be their their difference maker, I think, but I, I, not a big enough difference. Uh, New Orleans yeah, is just yeah. a different beast. He'll get him within like seventeen. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I'm with you with uh, New Orleans here, and then finally uh, the nightcap where we get to hear we get to hear a guy by the name of Chris Collinsworth call <laughs> call this game. Seattle makes that long trip to the East Coast to the Illa to play the aforementioned Philadelphia Eagles, Brandon. Who you got? Uh, I'm going to go with Seattle, but the way that Philadelphia has just been able to like pull it all out and how they play at home, I think it'll be a close game. Seattle just doesn't seem to, I don't know, have a lot going for them right now. They've got a lot of injuries, and I think that it'll keep the game close, but I still think Seattle will win it. Um. So I'm going to go with Seattle. All right. I'm going to actually, for the sake of having at least one difference, uh, I'm going to take Philadelphia. There's something, and, and I know, and I know there's the Nick Foles argument and there's the whole injury argument or whatever, but there's, there's something about Philadelphia, at least in the Peterson era, when they get to the playoffs, they become a different team right. and the crowd and the fan base becomes a different fan base. Yeah. Uh, a, a different, a different set of Philadelphia assholes, you know, <laughs> but, but, uh, th- there is a, a, a little bit of a, of an aura with Philadelphia and the playoffs and crunch time and things like that. They become tougher. And I think that between, I think this is a, a game where home field advantage really helps Philadelphia's cause. Um, so for that reason, as well as the long coast to coast trip, I'm going to take Philadelphia. Yeah. But also because we both took new Orleans, new England and Buffalo. So, um, <laughs> so I'll take, Phil- it I'll, up, man. I'll take Philadelphia and see if I'm the champion of the playoff week, but whatever champion of wildcard week. Anyways. Uh, so that's that. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to put a bow on the, as Ryan would say, on trust the podcast. We're going to wrap this podcast up and put a bow on it. Um, uh, Bo Jackson, uh, put a bow, bow nose, my man. Um, we're going to put a bow. We're going to put a bow on this podcast and we are going to thank all of you for listening in, uh, and, and wish you all, oh, by the way, happy new year to all of you. I don't know if I wished that to you. I don't, whatever. Happy new year. Um, but uh, especially our welcome. Chinese friends, happy Chinese New Year! <laughs> Chinese New Year. Paper when dragons. is that? I don't is know. It, isn't isn't that in like March or something? Um, isn't their New Year? Their New well, Year's. Di- their, I mean, their New Year's different. Uh, it's still a New Year everywhere. Yeah, it's January twenty fifth, which is weird because that's my best friend's birthday. Oh, so yeah, all right. Saturday twenty fifth. Saturday the twenty Chinese New Year's. 
Well, hey, happy happy early New Year to well, late New almost Year, whatever. A three weeks. The hell By the time this is out there, it'll be about almost three weeks. <laughs> There we go. Very good. But uh, we're going to convene next week. We will talk. Uh, we will talk over the wild cards. Did we get it 15 right? Fifteen days. Is... Bullshit. What? I'm just looking at Chinese New Year. Fifteen days. <laughs> All right. They get seven good. days off of work. They get seven days off of work. Yeah. But they also live in a communist country, so I'll go. I'll go to work and be free. Okay. That's fair. That's 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 very fair there. I appreciate that, America. But uh, all right, well, we'll convene next week. We will talk. Uh, we will recap the wild card rounds. We will go over the divisional rounds. Uh, hey, safe home, David Stern. By the way, a yeah. former NBA commissioner, Sam Weish, coach of the yeah. uh, Cincinnati Don, Bengals, Don Larson, only uh, Don Larson, only only uh, pitcher to throw the perfect game in the in a World Series. Some twenty-one year old um, rapper chick. Some 21 year old rapper, chick. aspiring rapper, female rapper. Oh, all right. Well, that's, that's she just so died. Oh, Jesus. Um, 2020 already coming out the gate. <laughs> Jesus, man. Yeah, but man. Anyways, anyways, um, that's it. That's the podcast. So, uh, Brandon, good day to you, sir. Good day to you as well. So long, everybody. Good night now. Happy almost Chinese New Year. Hang on, one more thing before you go. Remember, listen to our sponsors following this podcast, as that does help this podcast and this network out in a way that we appreciate very, very much. So if you could just ride it out 30 to 60 more seconds after this podcast is over, listen to those commercials, it would be doing us a very, very big solid. And again, we thank you. This has been a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. For more, log on to gearnetwork.com.